Very, very sad to report on the passing of Ruth Silverman, formerly of Iron Man Magazine, blogger, commentary, just avid fan of muscular women, muscular men, bodybuilding, and all physique-based sports. How's it going, everyone? You're watching Strength Addicts on all social media platforms, powered by TitanMedicalCenter.com, your go-to source for all the amazing therapies, number one in patient care, starting 49 out of 50 states, except for Idaho for now. Ruth was a real trailblazer, a pioneer. She was extremely vocal, opinionated, an excellent writer, and someone that I called a friend. Whenever I'd be at the Olympia or bodybuilding shows, if I needed a quote for an article, if I just wanted to talk bodybuilding, I could always message her on Facebook. And she was always very honest to the point and very sweet as well. And I don't think that she got the respect that she deserves. I think a lot of people recognize that she was an incredible writer and that she had a great eye for bodybuilding, but I don't think that she got the same like respect of like a Peter McGuff, for example. And I put her right up there with Peter. I mean, they're on the same wavelength, same quality of writer. I mean, just an incredible attribute to fitness media and to bodybuilding and to contest coverage. And she was just a really, really good person, a great writer and had a real personality in front of the camera. And that, you know, is, 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 is not as easy as it sounds. To hold a microphone and ask questions is the basics of it. To be able to come off with great questions on the fly, off the cuff, great you know, on-site commentary and to really know about the athletes and about their journeys, their trials and tribulations, to be able to incorporate that into an interview in a natural way where the athlete feels the love but also doesn't feel pressured to answer questions that he or she may not want to answer, that is a gift. That comes with a lot of time, doing a lot of interviews, you know, being at a lot of different shows and seeing the sport evolve over eras and um last time i remember seeing her i think was at the 2019 olympia 2020 olympia maybe we were waiting in line for our press passes were we no we were waiting in line to get in we already had our press passes because you get them on thursday night so i guess we were waiting to get into the meet and greet and i remember linda murray was there ruth was there some other people but i i just i just remember talking to her in line and the first thing she says, how are you doing, Christian? And I was just like, you know, I, I didn't know she was in front of me. I was behind her. And I don't even know how she saw me. But, you know, I'm pretty, you know, got a pretty striking appearance. And, uh, and I'm a little bit taller than the average person. Maybe I shook the ground and she, you know, I don't know. I don't know. But um, we just got to talking. And we talked about the late, great Sean Flux Tron Roden. And we talked about, I think we talked about Iris Kyle. Because you guys know I'm a huge Iris Kyle fan. And I think that, I, oh, that's why, because Linda Murray, won the, yeah, I had said something about Iris being like the greatest and it was really weird because Linda was, and I wasn't doing, I didn't know Linda was there. I, I'm not an insensitive person. I know some of you think that I am, but I'm not. Uh, it's just one of those things, like sometimes you say something and you just had no idea. Now, did I take it back? No, because I think Iris is the best. 10 time Miss Olympia. She's done so much for this work, as has Linda. And I love seeing them together, but it doesn't mean I don't like Linda. I just think that Iris is the best. And I'm a huge Yuxani fan. You guys know that. And you know, I've interviewed Yuxani three, four, five times. Even one time a snake was like, you know, like two feet away from us. But we did not stop the interview because you don't do that when it's a great interview like that, you know? A literal snake and not a little worm, a snake. But we just kept on going over at um, Miami Iron Gym. But in any event, um, we were just in line and it was just, talking like you know just two fans of bodybuilding and ultimately that's what Ruth was and that's what I am that's what Peter was and that's what you know contemporary greats like Ron Harris Kevin Gretsch that's what we are you know Jason Sanch we are fans of bodybuilding at the end of the day Xavier Wills Nick Strength and Power everybody fans of bodybuilding you got to be a fan of bodybuilding to be a great journalist or at least a journalist I mean, I wouldn't call myself a great journalist. I'm just, I do what I do. Got hundreds of articles in Iron Magazine, thousands of videos at Strength Addicts, most of your development, you know, Iron Mag TV, a whole bunch of stuff. But I would say that Ruth 
and Peter are definitely way above my pay grade. Way above my pay grade. They, you know, just... They did so much for the sport, and I think that it, it would be, I would be remiss to downplay that, you know, and I've always been a huge fan of the magazines, and the magazines really <clears throat> were, were, you were either legit or you weren't. You couldn't be like a DIY journalist, you couldn't be a part-time person, you couldn't be a part-time fan, you couldn't be a poser or a wannabe, you couldn't be any of these things. If you were going to land a gig writing in the magazines, the big magazines, you know, Flex, Muscular Development, Muscle Mag, Iron Man Magazine, Planet Muscle, the big, big, you know, magazines, the big print magazines, you know, reps, uh, you know, Muscle and Fitness. I mean, these magazines were it. And you had to be really good. And you had to be at board meetings. And you had to talk to the graphic designers. And you had to talk to the illustrators. You had to talk to the photographers. You had to talk to the editors and the managing editors and advertising. And it was just like this whole thing. And Ruth was all about that with Iron Man Magazine. And, um, you know, just an incredibly down-to-earth, humble person. But my gosh, did she have an eye for body, especially for the uh, female divisions. She was very, very keen on who was coming up. You know, the big champions, the defending champions, returning champions. She knew the ins and outs of the industry. And um, there's not a lot of people that were or that are as well-versed as Ruth Silverman was. And uh, you really have to appreciate that when watching commentary because, you know, she's pulling from so many different eras and she's able to, in a natural way, kind of like, you know, make a salad with all of that. You know what I mean? And if you're a real fan a historian, if you will, like the mayor of Bodybuilding or Bob Chicarillo or Sean Ray or people like that that really just know you appreciate that. It's very hard to get somebody that really knows to be entertained and to feel intrigued. And Ruth could deliver on that. You know, Ruth could deliver on that. Like your Jerry Brainums, you know, your Rick Drazens, your Greg Valentinos, your, your really good storytellers, they could be entertained by Ruth. And entertainment's huge. Entertainment, I think, is as big as as anything, really. Whether it's for an article, whether it's for a posing routine, whether it's to sell a tub of whey protein isolate, it's about entertainment. You have got to be entertained. You have got to be intrigued. You have got to want more. And then you will buy more, or you will read more, or you will go to a show. But entertainment is very, very important. And I think that she was able to tie it all together and write some amazing articles and do some amazing interviews and just really contribute to the media side and, um, you know, the creativity side, just the, the trend setting stuff. I mean, she was really a trailblazer. And again, this is an industry that has a lot of female competitors. I mean, I would say it's probably 50, 50 male to female, but in terms of writers, in terms of folks doing commentary, especially during her era, there weren't a lot of women like her. I mean, they just weren't. I mean, she was really, truly a trailblazer. She was a pioneer. And I think she was an excellent example for women wanting to do media. You know, when I saw... Um, oh my gosh, now it escapes me. Um, hmm... I'm going to, I can't remember right now, but there's a bikini show, an Australian girl. She's awesome. And I cannot remember the name of her page right now, but she reminded me of Ruth Silverman. And um, I'm going to look it up afterwards and feel really stupid that I couldn't remember the name of it. And I'll leave it in a little uh, tag in the description, but she reminded me a lot of Ruth Silverman. I can't, you know, for the life of me, I can't think of anybody to compare her to. And not that it's, you know, comparison is not necessary, but it just goes to show you that even in 2023, going into 2024, most of the channels and most of the pages that I can think of are men. Muscle Sport Mag, Evolution of Bodybuilding, Strength Addicts, you know, RX. Does RX have any women? I mean, they used to have Gail Auerbach. Gail Auerbach, I would consider... Uh, on, on some level to be like a Ruth Silverman. Gail was in charge of RX Girl. She was out during the trenches doing interviews. 
writing articles, very much like Ruth Silverman. Bikini Nation, I think it's called. I think Bikini Nation is what it's called. And, you know, the host of that reminds me of a Ruth Silverman, somebody that really uh, eats, sleeps, and breathes female divisions and didn't just stop with bikini, but, you know, covered it all because she saw that the women needed the exposure from another woman and a woman owning a channel and running a channel is huge. Now, the reason I couldn't remember her name, I, I don't know if she's still active or not. There's periods where she is and there's periods where she's not. It's very, very difficult because even you would think women would want to tune into that, but but I don't know that they do. Men, you would think, would tune into that, but I don't know that they do. It's very, very difficult. I don't want to make it a male-female thing, but in a very real way, 90%, if not more, of the folks that own and operate media sites in bodybuilding are men. You know, I would almost bet that Ruth Silverman was always around men, you know, in the sense that I don't know how many female commentators there were. I don't know how many female writers there were. I don't know how many, you know what I mean? So when I say she was a trailblazer, I'm not just, you know, trying to say something nice about an amazing person. I'm saying something very honest and very real and very truthful about a great person, you know? And she held her own, let me tell you, she held her own. She knew the sport inside and out, but she lived it. You know what I mean? She lived it and she she breathed it. She dreamt it. She was as hardcore of a fan as just about anybody that I can think of. And they respected her. The athletes respected her. The supplement company owners respected her. The fans respected her. People knew who she was. And, and that's powerful. You know, that's really, really powerful. And, uh, you know, again, I, I normally wouldn't sit on here for 13 minutes talking about you know, someone that passed away in a sport, I mean, because I, I just honestly don't know them that well, or maybe, you know, I, I mourn their passing and, and I wish them the best and their, their friends and family. But I think Ruth Silverman's a, a little bit bigger deal than that. I know that sounds a little weird, but I, I really do, especially because I hold myself out to be on some level a writer, on some level, you know, a commentator, on some level, perhaps a student of the history of bodybuilding. And Ruth Silverman is as big as they get. I mean, she is a big, big deal. So I don't know what we're going to see uh, from the various websites. I'm going to write an article for Iron Magazine here. And, um, of course, my video comes out for Strength Addicts, powered by Titan Medical. I would hope that Evolution of Bodybuilding, I know they'll cover this. I hope they will, but I'm pretty sure they will. But will Generation Iron cover it? I'm sure RX will cover it. What's going on with MD? You know, I was just talking to Robert DiMaggio, owner of Iron Mag Labs last night, and we were talking, like, what's going to happen with MD? You know, are you know, it's like, I, I can't imagine them just pulling the plug because it's it's got so much value and goodwill and name recognition. If anything, keep the website going and sell advertising, you know what I mean? I, I just don't understand. But hopefully they will put something up. And, um, you know desktop bodybuilding, mixed strength and power. I don't know that they know Ruth like that because they're a little bit beyond, a little bit past her time, but they should, they should still know. I mean, you, you've got to know who Ruth Silverman is and what her contributions to the sport of bodybuilding and physique based sports is. I mean, she, I, I, you know, there's like, there's some women stepping up, but <coughs> I just don't know if we're going to have another Ruth Silverman. When I think of Ruth Silverman, I think of like CJ from CJ's Elite. That's another lady right there, hard worker in a male-dominated field all over the place. Tremendous recognition. Now, granted, most suit designers are women, but she's not just in that circle. She's in the circle with the big people. Not to say the big boys because that's sexist, but pretty much they're all guys. So in any event, <clears throat> I just really wanted to take this opportunity to, you know, send my condolences to Ruth and her family, her friends, her fans, all of the many, many people that have read her articles, watched her commentaries, and will miss her greatly. She was an amazing human being. I only knew her in the context of bodybuilding, but I feel like I knew a good little bit about her. And... Um, a lot of our conversations, I think we spoke on the phone maybe like three or four times, but a lot of our conversations, and in person maybe 10 times, but our conversations were Facebook conversations and like messages like this big back and forth. You know, you, you talk to somebody like 10, 20, 30 times over the course of 10 or 15 years, and your conversations consist of three or four back to backs of messages this big on Facebook. Uh, you get to know somebody pretty well, at least I think so. And so, 
I'm gonna miss her. I'm gonna miss her. I was just thinking about her like maybe like three or four days ago, which is crazy, you know? I was, I, I, I swear, I swear, you know, I was thinking about her two or three days ago, three or four days ago, I don't know. And I was thinking about reaching out to her because I wanted to write an article. And I, I don't even know what the article was about. I think I just wanted an excuse to message her because I don't do contest coverage anymore. And, you know, I, what am I going to talk to her about? Like Nextzilla? I mean, like, I don't, you know, and, and I, I, I could, I should have just said, Hey, how's it going? Or, you know, what have you been up to? But that's to me is a little cheesy, but you know, it's just, it's just really bizarre because like three or four days ago, I was legit thinking about contacting her and might've even gotten to her uh, profile or something. And I, I don't know. I just, I obviously didn't, but wish that I had very similar to the passing of Bob Bonham. You know, with Bob, I literally was in a message him the day before that I found out that he passed away. And that's the guy we used to get coffee together and we used to like talk on the phone and I love Bob to death. And also like Ruth, avid fan of muscular women and knew all about women's bodybuilding and women's physique and all the other women's divisions. It just goes to show you sometimes you just, you know, you, you know, there's one certain thing in life. If you're born, you're going to die. And you don't know when it's going to happen. And you, you try to be as nice to people as you can that you like. And if you don't like them, then you try not to be mean to them. But I just got to say, you know, uh, Ruth Silverman was one hell of a lady. Let me tell you, one hell of a lady, one hell of a writer, one hell of a commentator, just one hell of a person.